Okay. Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season five, episode ten of The Expanse. This is the finale. Just checking the sound. Oh, I'm so nervous about this episode. Um, we ended on a complete cliffhanger uh, last time round with Naomi disappearing into the airlock. Um, we heard a banging. We don't know what's going on. I don't know what's coming. I really don't. I, In the back of my head, I've got this concern that she's going to run out of options and have to just blow the Chetsamoka to prevent anything else happening. That really worries me. Um, I've got to be honest, that's probably the thing I'm worried most about, which adds to my worry, because I think, what haven't I foreseen happening here? Because <laughs> obviously we have got other characters in peril. We've got Bobby and Alex racing in on the Razorback. We've also got Jim. Um, and Bull and Monica on the Rosie, they're headed towards it and they've heard, they know something's up because they've, they've now received the second broadcast from Naomi, but they don't know what's up. So there's a bit of them, I, I guess, which is probably where I'd go, which is what we're going to have, now we're going to have to go and find out because that could be some sort of a distress call, but like a real one from her. So it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't make you run away. Um, but at least, hopefully, they're going to proceed with some caution. I'm hoping she's got a way of taking out the proximity de detonator. I'm pretty sure that that was the case, that it, it is, like, if something comes within a certain range, it explodes. I'm sure there's lots of different, you know, rigging set up to, to set off the Chetsamoka, but I'm pretty sure one of them was, was a sort of boundary sensor, you know, that you cross it and then the ship blows. We've got our beloved um, Peaches and Amos have left Earth. <sighs> very happy about that. Very, very happy about that. Which means, you know, Peaches is with us now. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, I would have liked it, to be honest, after season three, when we, we met her, I wish she would have got a pardon and then just come on the Rosie then, but I appreciate it's a longer story than that. Um, and I suppose it gives it gives people a chance to sort of really shed um, the Melba of her and, and pick her up as, as a sort of, a, as a new character. But I just, I really, really, I like her in and of herself. I think she's really funny. I like that she's she's got a really dry, um, kind of dark sense of humour that I find really attractive. She's smart, you know, whether it's, you know, thinking strategically about what to do next, keeping herself going while she was in prison, um, you know, her ability to learn how to pilot and, you know, engineer on ships. It just is a reminder of what a complete shitbag uh, Jules-Pierre Mao was, because he would have just had her as an ornament at dinner parties. Like that was the extent of her talents as far as he was concerned. And there's clearly so much more to her. And I love, <clears throat> and I just love that we're going on that journey with her. She discovers those things and the real grit. And it's kind of ironic that she set out to do this to prove something to her father um, um, in, in order to win his love. But in the process of it completely outgrew him and the need for his approval. It's just such a wonderful redemptive story. So I've just I've enjoyed her all along. I need her to stay alive. I need her to be in the crew. I will be at this point. I've got to say, if Peaches died, tears. I'm also absolutely adoring Amos this season. Seeing a very different side of him. He is making a lot of changes. I feel like we're in a new phase with Amos now, where you know. It's murder snuggle. We've always called him murder snuggles. Well, not always, but since we saw that there was a little softness in him, we call him murder snuggles, and that's always been his way. 
it really does feel now like there's getting to be a real equivalent in, of murder and snuggles. Like he's really able to think now in the heat of the moment and do I need to kill this person? You know, am I willing to take the risk associated with letting this person go? And whereas maybe before 10 times out of 10, the person would end up dead, now maybe a seven and six, you know, and so on. You know, and him and him and Peaches are on a really similar trajectory here. They've both got big pasts. They have got a lot of blood on their hands, a lot of badness, a lot of, you know, but now they're both working on expanding the tribe and bring in civilization to themselves by creating it with other people. And I just, again, what a beautiful arc of a story they are telling with that. Fantastic. We're still kind of none the wiser as to whether it was Salvatore or somebody else in Mars who's associating with the Belters and making all of that stuff happen. But I'm pretty sure, and, and as, Given the state of where things are at at this point in the story, I can't imagine Marco is going to be dead by the end of this episode. So, tells me maybe he's carrying over into season six, which is like... I'll probably not want him to die by then. But he's got Philip right where he wants him now, is that that conversation with him where he you knew what he was doing the whole purpose of that visit to Philip was to disable his brain, basically, to kind of re reattach Philip to him um, by leveraging his primary trauma, which is the idea that his mother abandoned him, which she never did. Her father stole him. <sighs> so, you know, he goes in and, oh, I'm sorry. And then, you know, oh, your mother isn't dead. You know, I'm doing an African accent rather than a Creole one. But you know what I mean? Is that she has left us again. She's left us both. And you're just like, fuck off. But you know, like, the screws are being driven in to Philip. And he's ha he would have been raised like this his whole life. It's like Marco's approval is his food. He doesn't know how to survive without it in the world. And so he will go to whatever lengths he has to go to in order to meet that, unless he can be saved by, you know, people around him who love him unconditionally. That's about it. And that didn't work yet with Naomi. And I don't I don't know where this goes next now. I I really Yeah, I'm I the end of last episode, I was just mostly confused as to the the state of play. It was like, really? We're going into the finale with this many unanswered questions <laughs> and like this many unfulfilled arcs? Usually by this point, we've had a few arcs fulfilled. Not this fucking season. This season is just like, on, on Luna, we have Avasarala back in Pride of Place, the queen in her spot again to kind of be a caretaker leader, I feel, through this troubling time, which is, that is where Avassarale is best, in all honesty. I w probably wouldn't vote for Avassarale. I might now, she has learned stuff. But there is something to be said for, you know, you've got a peacetime consigliere and a wartime consigliere. I think it's the same with leaders. It's like, Avassarale is the leader I want when chaos is around. Um... But she, that doesn't mean she's necessarily the, the right leader for all seasons. Um, but she has, she's unquestionably got the most experience, the best knowledge base, um, and I think the best temperament for this particular challenge um, that she's up against, and Earth is up against, and the solar system is up against. Um, I at least hope that she's not, She's well, given what we've seen, it would be highly unlikely that she would go and start blowing up Sirius Station now and stuff like that, which is just cr um, crazy. That is crazy. I really loved, Avasarala said something like, you know, there are millions of innocent people on Sirius, hundreds of thousands of kids. 
And I'm like, yeah, just like her, just like Marco did to us. She was like, is he our role model now? And that's kind of how I feel when people bang a war drum in that sort of vengeful, unhinged um, kind of way. Is it's like, yep, yeah, that happened, but do we really, like, are we aspiring to be the evil that we're condemning here? Um, but again, that's always a position that's easier to hold when you're not directly involved, because... Shoot her in the head. I'm done. So yeah, I think this is going to be a bit of a wild finale. I have no idea where this is going. I don't know where it's going to focus. I don't know how many questions are going to be answered by, by the end of it. Or how many new questions will be asked. But I feel like Marco's going through that ring at some point, I'd love to see that this episode, even if I don't see the landing point, like the end bit, just to see him like disappearing into the ring would be really cool. And maybe like some proto molecule stuff switching on would be nice. I'm really, I'm actually properly fucking excited about this. So without further ado, let's have at it. Who's this? Lucy. I want to review the tracking data on the Zemea and any other ship that could have been close enough for a cargo transfer, because I'm just not buying this whole self-destruct thing. Sorry, but we got bigger thing. fucking fish to fry. Problem? Yeah. Two Martian warships and three armed belter ships. They have to belong to Marco and Eros. Shit. That frigate alone has got double our missile load. Well, can we win? You want a tactical breakdown? No, we can't win. The ship's low on PDC ammunition and we're badly outgunned. We have a real gun. By the time we're in effective range, we'll have been overwhelmed with missiles we can't shoot down. So we have to run. Shit. I'm just gonna be like this all episode of the Koto Free Hell. Fuck off! They have got fucking state in the art marsh. This is insane. We're fucked. I would take fire control. Fine. Shoot her in the head. I'm done. You don't have to be here to watch it happen. I don't look away from what I do. Camila. Captain now. Fuck off. Can Camilla. everybody just fuck off? Talk. Drummer has been done bad this season. Bad. She will not let me help her after this. That will move to you. There is no after if you blow up the We've fucking Rosie. Not from me. Marco Aneros killed millions on Earth. He murdered Fred. Mm. He started a war. That's why we're here. Yeah, we're a pair. Getting killed before we get to fight really sucks. <laughs> we can do both. Help save my friends and give him his war. Make ourselves the only things these assholes can see. You mean, burn every scrap of fuel and go after them? Empty our fucking magazines right in their faces. If they want her to fight, we'll give them one. And give my friends a chance to get away. No! Do it for Fred. Oh my god! Monica, you might want to leave now. Alex, we picked up a tail. Five ships. If the Chetsamoka was just a trap to draw the Rastanate out, well, we're in it now. No getting out. Christ. So while we deal with these ships, you'll have to go on alone. Get Naomi. We'll buy you every second we can. Oh, shit. Rastanate out. <sighs> no, 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 no. Shit, Alex. I'm sorry. We'll get her back, Jim. Go give him hell. There's not gonna be a fucking ruse in that day. Heads up. Hang on, Naomi. We're coming. Oh no, I'm just gonna cry this whole fucking episode. Please, Naomi, be up. Oh, I? I want everyone to make it. Oh, Jesus Christ. I am just gonna be crying this whole time, aren't I? Just quietly crying while everything goes to fuck. I'm gonna need a bigger mug. <laughs>
What are you doing? I, I'm just, oh, Naomi, Naomi. I will never forgive Marco Inaros for doing all of this, ever. That character is unredeemable. I don't give a shit what he does in the future. He's dead to me. Play. <laughs> What's going on? What did she just do? What did she vent? Chitsumoka just changed course. It's in a spiral. She Lisa's did! Not away from us now. That's why the hat was moving funny. She set it into a spin. The breaking burn will be hellish. We're already juiced to the cause. We could stroke out. If anything goes wrong, it'll rip the docking bridge apart, or worse, slam the two ships together. Naomi's on that ship. I'm gonna get her. That's that. Yeah, okay. Well, this is gonna hurt like a mother... Oh my god. At least one of these skinnies is not an idiot. Be grateful. That actually works for us right now. That's the last time you used that word on this ship. Excuse me? I know you're pissed about Fred mm. and psyching yourself up for the fight, but leave that skinny shit out of it. Duly noted. Thank you. I just had a thought. What if Oksana took Camille's gun and she's gonna shoot him? Does him. course in the center of the formation, targeting all five. Second, I start launching. Take us up to max burn for as long as the fuel holds out. We'll go right past us. Ready? Pause. I'm, I'm not ready. I've got an itchy ear. I'm not ready. I'm seriously not ready for this. We've got Camino over here, Jim over here. I don't want anyone to die. Naomi's dying. I want them to save her, but if they save her, they're going to blow up. Okay. Okay. The, the goal is to fly through them and to buy as much time as we can for the Razorback. We're not trying to win. Okay. I'd rather win. What are you doing? What we should have done before. 
each other in the back instead of S4-1s. Neither of the Belter ships are targeting us anymore. I can't wait to hear this story. I get it. <laughs> Belter hostiles, this is Rasanante. Shut down your reactors and stand down immediately, or we will engage. Acknowledge. It's okay. Drummer! This is Drummer. Yeah! So wait, pause. So am I to understand that there was almost like a civil war in the Belters? So when that guy said, let's do what we should have done, he was on about targeting everything they had at the... the um, like the Martian ship, their own, yeah? Oh my God. Oh my God. So we have got a total split now in the Polyam Belta fam, like almost 50-50 between those who did want to carry on Marco's mission and those who when the when Kamina set off the we are going to do a mutiny, people picked a side. I'm very happy with most people. Well, I'm very happy that the people I expected to be good are good. Let's put it that way. Um, I love that little one. It killed Corral. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. I can't. I really want to watch that through like ten times so I understand what each play was as it was going because I did not. I was too, like, my adrenaline was too high. It was just chaos. But I'm sure I can, I'll understand it all sequentially when I rewatch it, which is why I love rewatch. Okay. Now Kamina and Jim are on the same side. Okay. Play. Oh my god. Can we please? Naomi, if you can hear me, hang tight. Come hell or high water, we're gonna find a way to dock and get you off that ship. She doesn't want you to dock because the ship's gonna blow up. Idiot. <laughs> How is she gonna get off this ship? Is she gonna have to hard rack him again? Because I don't think she could do that twice. I'm not entirely sure she could do it once. She's not she's not in good shape. Detonate is that ring. You've done everything you can now. I don't understand. I don't understand how she gets out of this. I am out of hope. Apart from filling herself out of the ship, like literally, she. It's fucking music. She's fucking.
Alex, hold on a second. I almost got Wait! the approach figured out. I need to make this happen. Something fell off the chat. <laughs> fell off? Like what? Would have seen it. <gasps> Get her! Please get her! Oh my god. Shit. What is she doing? <laughs> She's signing! So no radio. Low air. We ship. And that one? It's gonna explode! Explosion hazard. Do not approach. The ship is circling her. We can't avoid it. Fuck. She's a... <laughs> she wasn't even trying to be rescued. She was dying to send a message. I can't. No. They saved you all for this one. They really did. Fuck now. <sighs> Sorry, I'm having to pull. Where's he got a gun? Here we go. Play. Still no single from Koto or Serio Man. Transporter from both are gone. And the Rosinante? Rosinante is under trust, heading for Chasmoka. I need to speak to Coral. We sent three type beam, all to drama ship. Nothing come back. The shit again! Yes, boss man. Good. Oh, I hope you die. I still hope you die, you son of a bitch. Doctor. I need to send a message to Jama and I need your help. Could you please meet me on deck six? Hi, Captain. Well, you're dead. There's no point to anger now. We tried to kill them. We didn't. Does that alter your plan? We still have more to do. You have grown. I fucking love that. <clears throat> I'm happy to see you. I'm a mess. I'm a fucking mess. I don't even know how I'm supposed to... Oh, God, no. It was a stroke. 
he died saving me from my mistakes. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. These are the logs from our battle with the Zemea. You did all this before taking on five enemies? Yeah. This is a tough little show. <laughs> This is just a good So where do we go from here? <clears throat> Luna makes the most sense. Amos is already there. Yeah, let's get the gang back together. My message. You never listened. The one I sent before I reached Palace. Something goes wrong. I didn't play it. Not even after. I would have meant you were gone. I wasn't ready to accept that. I keep thinking of things I wish I'd said before I left. And if you're listening to this, I may not make it back to say them. So, thank you for the time we were together and for letting me take my own risks. What we had together, our odd little family on the Rosy, it was good. You can let me go. Never. It'll all be all right. I will love you and Amos and Alex for as long as I love anything. But mostly you. Don't waste that. Take what we had and build on it. In that way, I'll still be there. Oh, God. Oh, I love her. No, no, I love him. No, no, I love him. This is the best. Honestly, I don't care. Just fuck off. I will take the mate. You take I the go shit. with you. Yeah, you fuck off as well. <laughs> Coward. I'm staying here. Yes. But we can still stay together. We have nothing to stay together for. Wow. Okay. You've hurt my drama, you're dead to me now. Hey, there's my murder snuggles. Oh! How's that? Yeah, she'll live to steal another day. <laughs> it was fun working with you again. I got my own thing now. Yay! If you change your mind, I won't. He's got a family. But I will have a drink with you. Yeah, that's right. Oh, shit. Oh! Someone get it! The bottle! Shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. Good to be seen. It's good to see you too, boss. <laughs> Losing a friend. Making a choice to hold your ground to save your family. As far as last stands go, that's the one I'd pick. He picked it too. Actually, I'm gonna need a minute to talk, Captain. Just you and me. What's happening? Take your time. Oh my god, his Peachy's gonna be the new pilot! I was gonna kill them because I didn't want to end up in a Martian gulag. You lined up on me. You said that you would put me down if I tried. I remember. Did you mean that? I did. But a lot's changed since then. So, 
Even though you were going to kill me then, now we got each other's backs, right? It's no option, right? <laughs> Damn, well, all right. We're good. Nova. She's going to ride with us for a little while. She's going to need a new ID, but I think I got that covered. I know a guy. Thank you for being cool about this. I'm sorry if I tried to kill you all. Oh my god. That hurt my soul. Hi. She's come a long way. She damn well has. Haven't we all? Mm-hmm. Just at a party now. It's so fucking weird after everything we've gone through this season. <laughs> Ma'am? Excuse me. Women in <laughs> She's come as a fucking <laughs> All we have to do now is to turn every Belter, Martian, and Earther into this. This is how we win. You must always have a knife in the darkness. Uh oh. Oh shit. How long have we got that? Oh shit, it's like been ten minutes! This wasn't even a dream. Was unthinkable and now for you and for generations of belters to come it will be something that happened i made this happen what is going on do not do not fuck. we didn't destroy all of the samir's torpedoes we missed one. That's what they said. I'll tell you why, because it wasn't aiming at us. It was aiming away from us and away from the sun when we lost it. It could have been a misfire. Sure, but if it wasn't, is it possible that the protomolecule sample was on that torpedo? <gasps> yes. It's possible. That's what they God, fucking God, did. Don't make a fuss of it. You motherfucking shit. What's he done? Is it the fucking... What? Our ships were struck by a massive micrometeor cloud as the attack began. All three sustained significant damage. The rocks may have been stealth-coated. Oh, motherfucker! delay? Almost three hours. This is Yes. No. Based on the drive signatures, it looks like several of them were previously reported lost by the MCRN in engagements with Inaro's forces. Oh no. Oh shit, is that the Tripoli? Fuck! So Medina Station, they've just seized the ring! Entire fleet of Martians gone rogue in league with Inaros. That's impossible. It's madness. You may have bought them. 
How? With the proto molecule. There's a possibility the sample wasn't destroyed with the Zimbabwe. Why would Martians take proto molecule through their ink after what it did on Ilus? Maybe they know something we don't. Shit. What is gonna happen? What is gonna happen? And on behalf of Admiral Duarte, I would like to extend our congratulations on a well-fought victory. Tell the Admiral he has the protection of the Free Navy and that Laconia is yours and your heirs from this time forward. With our gratitude. I wow. Son of a bitch! This is to confirm that the sample arrived safely. We are already seeing beautiful results. By the time you arrive, I hope to be ready for third phase construction. I am confident that the structures are stable and, I believe, still intact. With enough time and proper equipment... Fleet, Barkeep, approaching Laconia Ring. Transit vectors are set for clear passage. Laconia okay, Ring. Titles. That's one of them ships. It looks like a ship that's in the sky in Laconia, but like an organic ship, like the proto molecule would make. I'm watching this all the way through unless it suddenly disappears, guys. <gasps> oh my god, it glowed! things first one of the best episodes of this show period i'm babbling because i have been absolutely taken apart by this episode that was such good episode it felt like a film they did so much and i had no idea that they were going to do this much in the finale that's that, I think, was my nervousness at the end of last episode. It was like, but wait, they're never going to close. You know, we're never going to make it through all of these storylines in the finale. So I was thinking there was so much that was going to go over that it would be unsatisfying. And I was completely wrong. They hit everywhere. I can't even believe we started this episode knowing it was still on the Chetsamoka. That feels... Really past tense now. It's only been 40 minutes or something. Oh my god. Our girl is where our girl needs to be. Everyone is back on the Roosie. Our team is united. What I love about this show is that each character that we have is strong enough to carry an episode on their own. Or a season on their own. Or how, however long. I'm very... I'm never like... Like this season we barely saw any gym. And it was fine. And we had, when was that period of time that we didn't see, we didn't see a Vassarella for a while. I think it might have been season, yeah, it's back in season three. And you're like, I miss her, but we'll get her back and it'll be fine. It, that, this is a properly ensemble cast we've got here. I think it's really quite fucking remarkable, frankly. I've got to go to something that really pissed me off, is Bull drinking out of Alex's little mug. Let it go. That just popped into my head as a source of rage. But, you know, okay, Alex is gone, um, and we all know why. Because, because, um, 
I'm really glad personally. I love Alex's character, but I really wouldn't, I'm not sure I want him recast. I remember us like chatting about this when, when stuff came out and thinking, I don't, re I don't think I do actually want Alex recast at this point. It's like so far in. It's one thing, you know, if you've only spent a season with a character or something, but to come so far is pro it's, I'm really glad they took the braver choice actually and just decided to kill the character and, and we'll come back in another way. You know, we've got other pilots. I'd be really interested to know what training our girl Peaches has because that would be interesting if she actually winds up being a shit hot pilot to replace um, Alex. Um, I'm with that all the way. That would be like fucking win-win scenario for me. But there's that. Um, I don't know what, I don't know where Naomi is going to be emotionally now because she looks like relieved but knackered. Like what happened? Has she has she accepted that Philip is gone? Has she accepted that she did what she could to save him? I don't think she. Look what she just did. Like Naomi will fall back. This is basically what she did with him in the first place. She wasn't strong enough the first time. She fell back. She came back again. She wasn't didn't have what she needed this time. She fell back. I don't think this is the last Naomi is dealing with Marco and Philip. I really don't. Um, it's going to be, that's going to be a very fascinating one to see play out in season six. And a real surprise. So many assumptions I had about this season have just been completely blown out of the water. So that torpedo that went off from the Zemea was carrying the protein molecule, which Sovaterra picked up. And I've got to say, that that mission, I mean, you've got to give it to them. That was an excellent mission. They had Medina Station firing through the ring at Earth and Mars. And then Sovaterra's rogue Mars faction come in and just, they're safe then, they're through. You know, you finished them off and they're through. But I guess there's like, they went through the soul ring, but then you've got the Laconia ring, which is the ring that takes you to the planet Laconia. That's the L I was talking about, guys. In the other thing, when I was like, oh, there's that shit by the ring and it's called something beginning with L. So I actually did see that it was like, anyway, that's not important. Um, lot of death. Uh, I think they just inadvertently would have actually bought Earth Mars and the rest of the belt together because that attack hit them all. I'm sure that there are, belt, there are belter civilians and belters on Medina station that do not agree with what's happening. They've just taken out both an Earth and a Mars ship. So it's going to be everyone versus fucking Marco and Aros's free navy next time. I don't think there's going to be any problem bringing the alliance together. It might be the irony of this situation is actually that what it takes to stop Marco is what he asked for in the first place, um, which is actually to treat Belters equally. To we're they are going to need to give a fucking new deal to the Belters now to bring them on board. That is what should be done. A new deal. Just please, like stop it. We don't need. To be creating this level of poverty and destitution in the universe. Can we just stop it now, please? That's what I would like to see. Um, but then we add the plot twist of all plot twists, which is what right back going right back to the beginning of the, of the season. We saw um, Dr. Koye um, had shown Jim, you know, her best rendering of what she saw when she was like between worlds. This hasn't. Our instruments have not been able to detect anything inside the artifact at all. With no better alternatives, we sent small mammals through it. The passage went all of them, catatonic or dead. 
I believe what I saw inside may only be visible to human perception in ways we don't understand. I created a simulation which approximates what I witnessed when I fell through it. These entities created the artifact and destroyed the protomolecule builders, wiped out their whole civilization in an instant. And now we're using their rings. You're saying these things are a threat to us? Yes. I am. And how do you know that? Every time I pass through a ring, <laughs> for a moment, it's like I pass through their world. Mm. I see them. And each time I see them, they seem angrier. I think we're waking them up. Um, and it was like... They're, all, they're not, like, but it looks like wormy. Um, and she, and I can remember, I think Jim said, like, just every time he sees them, they get angrier. And it looks like Sovater going through the Laconian ring with the proto molecule has just created a bit of a situation. <laughs> Because instead of a nice blue, they just fully disappeared into a black and red. So I'm not sure if they literally just were wiped out of existence. Or if they are wiped out of our existence. And they're in that weird, not anywhere kind of thing. And I love that it happened to Sovater right at that moment. Like, I really love that. That just as he was in his absolute element, so proud, I'm there thinking, wow, here's the villain of, excuse me, here's the villain of season six coming. Nope, dead, I think, but we don't know. But gone for the time being. And it was just so pleasing the way they did that. That was really, that was up there with um, C uh, CQB. That, of like that. La, 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 la. Silence. Like what? And then it's like someone's paused them. That was brilliant. That was so, so good. Oh my God. There was, there was so much in this episode. Drummer did a rebellion. Save the day. Now they're free. If so they're free to choose a side. I have a funny feeling it's going to be Kamina that is kind of one of the principal leaders, if not the leader, of the Belter of Resistance to Marco's Free Navy now. That would be the logical place for her to go. It would give them some safety as well in terms of being not completely on their own. Um, and it would have been their choice. Like, they, they would have picked a side now. I'm so proud of Drummer. I'm so proud of her. I love that. That whole, like... And I was, like, 90% sure it was coming. But it didn't make it any, any less satisfying when it happened. I got my dead girl. I really got everything I wanted from this finale, basically. Everybody I wanted alive is alive. Um... Our teams all together. Peaches is on the Rosie. By the way, that scene with Jim and Amos was, oh God, I've missed that so much. I have missed the chemistry of our group so much. Oh, he just did that in a way only Amos, only my beloved murder snobs could do it. I just loved it. I loved it. I'm going to wind up loving this more than any other season, aren't I? It's going to get me in the end. That was so... I need to watch this immediately. Like, I need a rewatch immediately. And I'm so excited for tonight now because I'm going to edit this and get it up and you guys are all going to go nuts because you don't know you're getting a double drop. Um, and then I get to watch everyone else's reactions to it. Oh. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's been murder not being able to watch... Like, because I, I, I literally haven't... I've had to unsubscribe from a whole bunch of reactors that I really like watching because they do the expanse and you know they they're following real time. So 
I don't want to see any thumbnails. I don't want to see anything like that. I've literally muted my, all my social media has been, has muted words like drummer, Kamina, <laughs> the exp like all the main characters, the show, everything like I have locked down for this season. I haven't been spoiled once. I literally did not know anything. I'm so pleased and ecstatic about that because it's been a while. Like we're just, I mean, for those of you on YouTube, it's been a long while, but even for patrons, I'm now sitting here watching this on March the 2nd, 2021. So whenever you're seeing it, like it's already like the show has not been on for a good few weeks now. Um, so yeah, I've got like a list of, of reactors I want to go to. I'm a whole, I really want to see Cardi Nicole. I really want to see Nikki and Steve react. And there's a whole bunch of others, but those are the first two, which I'm like, they're, they're, on, they're first on my list to see how they react to this. Um, also Cat and Sunny. I love Cat and Sunny. Like, and I've not been able to literally watch anything on the channels because I can't risk going in and, you know, fucking things up. So that will be what, what I will be doing with my evening while you're probably watching this. Um, I'm speechless. Like I, I loved the battle sequences, even though at parts I was completely mystified as to what was going on, and that was fine because it was just like, oh no, what well, no, no, like I know if someone's smiling or if someone's <laughs> like crying, I'm gonna know, you know who's firing on whom. I think that's probably been the biggest challenge for me this season. Is the first season where there were so many different ships that on a first watch. I wasn't keeping, like, normally we've got a whole bunch of ships, and I know immediately, like, the moment we've got the external of the ship, I'm like, oh, it's the Agatha King, like, oh, it's the Hammurabi, oh, it's the, you know, whatever. Not this season, like, I had to wait until I was inside the ship and seeing people walking around until I knew, knew where we were. And that was just the sense of scale of this season, it gives you some idea, like, I could normally track up to maybe, like, 10, 12 ships, but this was like, fuck off, I can't keep, I can't keep track of all these ships. And it's extra complicated because you had, you know, Martian ships that were masquerading as Bell twos, but then you had regular Martian ships, and then you, it just... You've got to admire the sheer scale of this season. Do you know what? Fuck it. This is my favourite. Like, the scale of this season is unrivaled. It's enormous. Like, literally, like, the cast of characters, enormous. The cast of ships, enormous. All of the different plots and subplots that, that we've been going through. Like, really big. I, it has, this has probably been the most difficult season in terms of making sure, like, I'm following all of the arcs. in each, Because our whole team was split up, but each arc, there wasn't a dead arc. I mean, there never is a dead arc in the expanse, but there wasn't even like a slightly less important arc. You know, you could have said, oh, well, you know, Murder, Snuggles and Peaches was less important to the, you know, to the overall thing, but it wasn't because we were in peril. So it was really important that we understood what's going on. And you you don't know who's maybe going to join and be a part of the team in the future. You're trying to get to know everyone just in case. <sighs> so our Polly and Belter fan is now split up. Sayonara suckers uh, to Oksana and the other guy. I didn't even bother to learn his name. Good. I'm glad there will be fewer characters that I've got to remember. Because I still can't, I can't tell you the names of the, the Polly and Belter fan. Joseph is one of them. Is that the guy who stayed, Joseph? Um, but yeah, I... Oh, season six is going to be so fucking good, isn't it? It's going to be so good. Oh, my God. Because we're going to be starting season six in the wake of this. It's almost like the reverse of this season. Like this season was started like we were waiting for the attack to happen. We knew it had commenced, but nobody else did. So we're there waiting, you know, for several fucking episodes, like three or four episodes. When when is this bloody asteroid gonna hit? Next season, it's gonna be totally different, isn't it? Because you could it's live, like you're going in. They were watching that. 
Like that was three hours out. And I have never ever seen a Vassarella look how she looked in the in that realization of what had happened. I have never seen like she actually looked deflated there for a minute of like, I cannot believe that this has just happened. So Marco has successfully got his navy through the ring. They've now basically set up minefields and stuff and probably all sorts of shit. Medina Station will still be there ready to go if, if needs be. They've claimed the rings, claimed the soul ring. And they've given Mars Laconia in kind of compensation for their help. But it's clear they're in different systems. They are not, you know, Mars aren't, Sovaterra and his crew want to come back. Like, that was a one-way mission. It really was a one-way mission by the looks of it, too. Where are they going to pop out? I'm just, oh, God. I can't remember if the wormy things are the builders or if they're the thing that the builders built the proto-molecule stuff to stop. I'll know that by the time this has been edited, so I'll just put it in. Um, shit me, shit me, I want to watch this again immediately, I really do. <sighs> so RIP Alex Kamal, um, and just to separate the character from the actor for a moment, I will really miss Alex. I have enjoyed Alex's character and you guys know I did not get on with Alex at the beginning. Alex just chilling. It's good to see her, I think. Wait! I flew with the Mars Navy for 20 years before I shipped off on the camp. <laughs> uh, so, so you're helping. Yeah, you see, I served. And I was honorably discharged. There's a hell of a lot more than I can say about you, cowboy. Alright, calm down. How well do any of us really know Naomi? Oh, uh I came to really love that character and the way he grew into himself and became the pilot he'd always dreamed of being. So I'm really sad. I am really sad to lose Alex. Um, but I did kind of come to, I didn't even, wasn't even sure he was going to be in this season. So I feel like I've sort of been granted a bit of a, a gift in having like a last uh, season with Alex so that we could actually see him off. He died a hero. He really did. He didn't have to go and do that. Um, you know, they said as they were going in, you know, Bobby was like, we can stroke out. So this wasn't like he went in thinking it can't happen. He was just, I am saving Naomi and that's the end of that. Um, and I think those scenes are going to hit differently now I know where the destination was going. Because obviously at that point, our focus was on how sad for Alex. Like, we're thinking the Rosie's dead and these might be the survivors. And they've got to go on without... <laughs> You know, the Rosie, but you go back and watch that. I'm already rewatching it in my head now. I'm just thinking, oh, fuck. That is going to... I am going to cry at that whole thing. Any time. I don't think I'm ever going to make it through that without crying. Oh, I love this. I love this so much. This show is just... It's really special, guys. It's a really, really special experience to be a part of in so many different ways, but the fandom is another way in which it's an extraordinary experience. Um, so yeah, let me know how you felt. I, I'm fucking, by the, the end of this, I'm talking myself into this thing. This was the best season so far. Um, if not, it's tied, um, but it's irrelevant. I mean, it's, this really is one of those shows for me where it, my favorite, season is less important than it is in a lot of shows because I know for some people there's a really big like gap between their favorite season and their not favorite season in this it really wasn't that way for me if you go and watch my first reactions to this in season one I fell for this show virtually immediately like I developed attachments virtually immediately um I don't always do that like that's not a thing I just do 
But this really got me very early on. I loved season one. I loved the mystery. I loved the noir. I loved Miller and, I, you know, the Julie Man mystery and all of that stuff. You know, who is Fred Johnson? Oh, he's the butcher of, you know, Anderson Station, everything else. It was a fun, just fucking brilliancy with that, you know, the Eros and... That was amazing. So, like, literally, I know for a lot of people, maybe it's like, you know, their seasons are like this and this compared to each other. Mine are like this. You know, I might be more or less animated at different moments, but my actual enjoyment of, of the whole thing as a package is really not remarkably different because I just love it that much. I blown away constantly by the creativity in this show, how they create the world, how they create the costumes, you know, the, the, the hard science of it, and then the, the mind fuckery of it, and the deep character study of it, and just the love that goes into this show is apparent. Yeah, just amazing. Tell me all of your thoughts, all of your thoughts, and yes, I did see at the end that thing that was the proto molecule in the sky did go t -t -t and kind of looked like it was switching on, which I'm guessing is connected to the cyber terror situation. So they've come through the ring with the proto molecule. Now that's activated. What is going to happen on that planet is what I'm getting at. Um, Cortazar is down there. It's the first time we've seen him properly in time. Um, like, that planet looked amazing. Like, that really did look great. So I can't fault, you know, the Martians for, for wanting something more, but there's ways and means of going about this shit, and you don't destroy another planet to do it. Um, But yeah, season six is going to be a doozy, because now we've got, we've got a whole new thing going on now. It's not just about the protein molecule, which is reactivating. It's also about the fucking wiggly worms. Oh, I love it. That's it. That's me done. I gotta go. Yeah, that's that's a long ass video. We're on like an hour and forty minutes. <laughs> Until the next time. Bye bye.